Wombat Stew by Marcia K. Vaughan and illustrated by Pamela Loss. As I read the story, run your fingers along the words on each page and when you hear this sound, it's time to turn the page. One day on the banks of a billabong, a very clever dingo caught a wombat and decided to make Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Platypus came ambling up the bank. Good day, Dingo, he said, snapping his bill. What is all that water for? I'm brewing up a gooey, chewy stew with that fat wombat, replied Dingo with a toothy grin. If you ask me, said Platypus. The best thing for a gooey stew is mud. Big blops of billabong mud. Blops of mud? Dingo laughed. Ho ho, what a good idea. Right, oh, in they go. So Platypus scooped up big blops of mud with his tail and tipped them into the billy can. Around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang. Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Waltzing out from the shade of the ironbarks came Emu. She arched her graceful neck over the brew. Oh, Dingo, she fluttered. What have we here? Gooey, chewy, wombat stew, boasted Dingo. Oh, if only it were a bit more chewy, she sighed. But don't worry, a few feathers will set it right. Feathers? Dingo smiled. That would be chewy. Righto, in they go. So into the gooey brew, Emu dropped her finest feathers. Around and around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang. Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy wombat stew. Old Blue Tongue the Lizard came sliding off his sun-soaked stone. Silly Dingo, he hissed. There are no flies in this stew. Can't be wombat stew without crunchy flies in it. And he stuck out his bright blue tongue. There's a lot to be said for flies, agreed Dingo, rubbing his paws together. Righto, in they go. So Lizard snapped 100 flies from the air with his long tongue and flipped them into the gooey, chewy stew. <coughs> round and around and around the bubbling billy, Dingo danced and sang. Wombat stew, wombat stew, crunchy munchy for my lunchy wombat stew. <coughs> Up through the red dust pop. Echidna. Wait a bit, not so fast, he bristled, shaking the red dust from his quills. Now I've been listening to all this advice and take it from me. For a munchy stew, you need slugs and bugs and creepy crawlies. <coughs> Dingo wagged his tail. Why, I should have thought of that. Righto, in they go. So Echidna dug up all sorts of creepy crawlies and dropped them into the gooey, chewy, crunchy stew. <coughs> the very clever Dingo stirred and stirred all the while singing, Wombat stew, wombat stew, hot and spicy, oh so nicey, wombat stew. <coughs> Just then, the sleepy koala climbed down the scribbly gum tree. Look here! He yawned. Any bush cook knows you can't make a spicy stew without gum nuts. Leave it to a koala to think of gum nuts. Dingo laughed and licked his whiskers. Righto, in they go. And into the gooey, chewy, crunchy, munchy stew, koala shook lots and lots of gum nuts. Aha! cried Dingo. Now my stew is missing only one thing. What's that? asked 
the animals. That fat wombat. Wait! Stop! Hang on, Dingo. You can't put that wombat into the stew yet. Why not? You haven't tasted it. Righto, I'll taste it. And that very clever Dingo bent over the billy and took a great big slurp of stew. Ah, Grafui! I'm poisoned, he howled. You've all tricked me. And he dashed away deep into the bush, never again to sing. Wombat stew, wombat stew, gooey, brewy, yummy, chewy, wombat stew. Now that you have read Wombat Stew by Marcia K. Vaughan and Pamela Lofts, use these suggested questions or discussion points with your child. You may like to pause the recording after each question to allow you some time to share a response together. How many words that end with Y can you find? Can you find brewy, chewy, gooey, lumpy, crunchy, munchy, muddy, yummy, billy, creepy, spicy? What is the saying that's being repeated? What is a billabong? What is a billy can? Why did the dingo name his recipe wombat stew? What might he have called his stew if he had caught one of the other animals? Koala cookies? How do we know this story is set in Australia? There are no koalas in Tasmania or Western Australia and platypuses are only found on the east coast of Australia, including Tasmania. So where in Australia do you think this story is based? The animals are friends to the wombat. How did they save his life? How can we be good friends to others?